This right here gonna be a cakewalk. When I seen the roster of characters that Multiverses was offering and how they were bringing back a lot of the iconic voice actors to play those characters, I was so excited. But my excitement is quickly fading. Seeing that the game has 26 characters on the roster, but only 5 characters are available at launch, with Shaggy being the only one that's permanent, and the other 4 characters have a time limit. They alternate every week. I did not like that. If you want to unlock all the characters in the game, one option is either grind through the roof or spend roughly $210. Learning that fact about the game, I quickly was uninterested. With multiverses in general, I see two things on Twitter. People either complaining about the monetization or super OP characters. And I think they have a lot to figure out before this game can truly shine. Now as for Street Fighter 6, they finally wrapped up their season one DLC. And in my opinion, if we were gonna give an award to who has the best season one DLC out of Mortal Kombat, Tekken, or Street Fighter, I think Street Fighter 6 wins it. The design, the variety, the new ideas, it's incredible. For their season pass too, Street Fighter 6, it seems, according to this tweet here, that going forward, it will be the norm that they announce all of the DLC characters for the season at once. So they will not be doing this reveal here. This They will just reveal all the characters and you can decide whether or not you're excited or not. Me personally, I like this idea because having someone pay for something and they don't know what it's gonna be, in my opinion, isn't the best. I mean, let's talk about Tekken. A lot of people pre-ordered the game expecting the DLC to be something fantastic. Now, a lot of people were disappointed because they see that Tekken is reselling a lot of past things from Tekken 7. Whether or not you like those characters or not, I think we all can agree that instead of reselling old ideas, they should be new. You guys remember the video that I made yesterday where all of these different content creators were getting DMCA notices for using in-game music, basically playing Tekken 8, the music for the stage, they get dmca for that. Harada responded and he basically said, that's not supposed to happen. These kind of issues like copyright and stuff, we go to third party you know, companies and we have them do that. Like if you ever see me get striked or someone else get striked, you will see a weird name and that's because it's not directly Bandai Namco, it's a company who's working for Bandai Namco. So Harada basically said he's going to go to that company um, and he's going to tell them, hey, don't strike music. Don't do this with music. Music is OK. So he's working on that. The request should come to an end very soon. Now, we all know that the rumored, you know, leaked characters was Lydia at first and then it was Marnock and Fakamam. Lydia got revealed. Also, Harada had a tweet where he was kind of teasing all of these characters. One of the characters he teased is very much matched Lydia. We also had the data mine movesets that was in the game since launch, some even since the beta. And that stuff also pointed to Mardok and Lydia and Fakron being DLC. We now have a third confirmation, and this is pretty much, and the reason why I say confirmation is because it's pretty much confirmed at this point. You have you have hints from Haradas, you have things in the game, you have one character being announced, you now have their fighting choreographers being credited within the game. This screenshot here, as you can see on the left, it says motion capture actors, motion capture cooperation. And basically, the person who did motion capture, uh, there was two of them, for Fakamram in Tekken 7, they are being credited for working on Tekken 8. And that can only be possible if Fakamram is indeed making a return. Now, there's no mention of Mardok, but you have Lydia, you have Fakamram. Mardok's is basically guaranteed at this point. Someone was asking, could we expect a Fakamram reveal at Tiger Upper? Because, you know, one character is supposed to come in summer, fall, and then winter. And if everything is correct, Fakamram will be the final one. Which, if you look at the TWT uh, listings, Tiger Upper is also the last tournament. And Tiger Upper liked this tweet about Fakamon being announced at their event. So this is just signs everywhere at this point. Now, DLC characters is not the only thing we're waiting for. The pile is stacking up oh so high. We are waiting for a Lydia Sobieska release date, Seaside Resort release date, Photo Mode release date, 
We're also waiting for the release date of the Defense Update Volume 1.05. And finally, the Battle Pass, the first one that Tekken has released. By the time this video goes up, it has expired. And we're now waiting for a Battle Pass 2. So there's a lot of things that we're waiting for. And the developers probably will make an announcement very soon. The developers said time and time again that they don't like to shift away the attention from competition for announcements. So they're probably going to wait until those tournaments pass by it then announce times release dates a tech and talk harate has a tweet here where he's talking about guilty gear strive now i guess they did some kind of announcements and this kind of led to the guilty gear strive community asking harata some questions like who's your favorite characters he lists out these five characters here and then he then goes on you know the conversation quickly turns into guest characters and while he doesn't answer specifically yes or no he does go into a lot of detail about just fighting games in general he's talking about sales he's talking about guilty gear street fighter mortal Kombat. if you guys want to pause this tweet go ahead and pause and read it it's like five or six pages i could dedicate a full video to this but i'm trying to focus on all the other things but when harada made this tweet some tekken fans were not happy you know typical tekken fans one person here says look this is cool and all but guilty gear is doing fine just as arcs baby what is that you could have used this chance to revive other series and get more eyes on them like i don't know soul caliber virtual fighter doa you did like tease us at evo japan for nothing so f us okay now harada responds to this person perfectly now while i think virtual fighter soul caliber and all those other games probably would have some good guest character potential in tekken 8 this is not how you go about asking harada says how does my mention a not necessarily mean that i'm not doing b or are you psychic and can see everything no it doesn't you're the type of person who when someone says apples are good you have a spinal reflex that says you're ignoring grapes you negative bastard stop writing dirty words and shut up and go to bed if you guys are on twitter you may have seen this tweet about pancake and waffles someone responds with that harada also has a spinal reflex and says waffles at this point the waffle house is hunting all of us but let's keep going the final thing that I want to share with you guys is this post that I made to Twitter. You guys really should follow me. Tekken 8 players want characters with low usage rates like Lei and Anna, while also hating characters that had higher usage rates like Marduk and Fakramam. What could explain this phenomenon? I simply ask this question because I'm a Yoshi main. I sit back, I spam flash, spam unblockables, and I really don't understand why you guys want the characters you want. I do a lot of digging into character lore and trying to understand backstories and stuff like that, but it can't give me the full like mindset of like a Fakaron main, an Anna main. So I extend this question to you guys. Comment down below, why do you dislike Marduk and Fakramam so much, but love characters like Lee, Anna, who have lower usage? I think Lee and Anna is cooler personally because their moveset is more unique. It offers a different uh, gameplay experience. Marduk is kind of unique too. Tekken 7, he was really busted. Fakaram, I think he's kind of the typical new designed Tekken characters. If you break him down into chunks, you will see that those chunks matches a lot of things that the other 